Good evening. Thank you, Delaney, for uh, that very sweet introduction. Many thanks to all of my dear colleagues at George Washington Carver and at the district office, and of course to my friends and family. All of these folks uh, have been true supporters of the work I do in my classroom and in the community. When I was gathering my sentiments in preparation for tonight's speech, I couldn't stop thinking about some numbers I came across this summer in the Kids Count data book. This publication, uh, compiled by the Annie E. Casey Foundation annually, looks at the well-being of children uh, throughout the country, ranking states based on children's economic, education, health, family, and community well-being. According to the data, here in our great state of California, we rank 41st in child overall well-being. That's just nine ranks away from the worst position. As of 2011, 2,085,000 children were in poverty in California. 23% of children. That's nearly a quarter of all California children in poverty. These are alarming numbers, but for most of us, they are not a surprise because these are our kids. We see them every day. Our schools are on the front lines of this struggle with poverty, and each one of us does all we can do to counteract this public health crisis. We fill our classrooms with snacks, activities, supplies, to try and level the playing field between the haves and the have-nots. We develop lessons through uh, deep inquiry and tolerant, uh, tolerant discussions of tolerance around controversial topics, and give all students access to exceptional educational experiences. We do everything we can. And even though I still linger on that awful number, 2,085,000 children in poverty. I am overwhelmed with a sense of hope because I know that there are thousands upon thousands of other educators out there, out here, all of you, teachers who are tackling this issue with your brilliant ideas in new ways each school day. Thank you for all the work you do every day. Namaste.